and I am recording. Okay, guys, let's get uh, let's get this thing started. Thank you very much. My name is Max Trinidad, partial MVP, and I'm glad uh, you guys joining me tonight in this session, integrating partial into SSIA script task. Um, sponsored by Sapiens Technology, Plural Site, and of course PowerShell.org. Uh, is a community-based organization that supports uh, partial user groups all around the state and the world. So uh, feel free to sign up and uh, and check it out. So let's get things started. Meetings, as you all know, is every third Tuesday of the month, six, uh, seven to eight. This session, we all start gathering at six thirty, uh, and of course, there's my website. We all use Link Client to connect, and uh, Florida PowerShell User Group have a new site on their .NET Nuke, and we're loving it. We are loving it. Presentation roadmap. It's gonna be a lot of stuff in here, okay? This is for both people who kind of understand basic .NET, work with XML technology, and also has their hands on SQL Server, 20, uh, no matter what version, 2008, 2012, the latest one, uh, in working with SSIS, which is the integration services. It's the application where you build your, your ETL, your extra transform, and load of your data uh, through, you know, through different system into uh, SQL Server. Uh, we're gonna talk very basic on .NET XML objects, and I'm show a demo on that. Very simple, very easy. Then we're gonna move into uh, using the SQL Server data tools, uh, especially 2012. Uh, I have uh, Visual Studio 2012 loaded on my machine and the uh, SQL data tools integrate with Visual Studio. Uh, so it's an additional components for, for BI. Uh, and then we're gonna show some tips and tricks on how, do you in, how can you include your PowerShell script into a uh, SSIS package using the script task component, which is one of the components you can add into your uh, package in order to you know, read and use, and you can reuse your PowerShell script in it. Tools of the trade, we're going to be using Sapiens Technology, uh, uh, Primal uh, XML, Primal Script, uh, PowerShell Studio. I think norm mainly going to concentrate on using uh, PowerShell Studio and Primal, Primal XML. And then there's an open source .NET development uh, tool, I forgot the T there, uh, it's called Sharp Develop, and you can build .NET application with it, but I'm going to show you one specific option component that this uh, uh, tool have that makes it very valuable, especially when you don't know uh, certain .NET languages, uh, and, and I'll explain later on that, but you're going to love that. XML and PowerShell. Well, basically, uh, when we're going to read an XML file, uh, of course, they have content XML format in it, uh, and we use PowerShell. We use the accelerator. Is what define what type of object uh, it's going to be used. It's going to consume that XML file, right? So this is the basic uh, line, one-liner that will build that object for you. We start with a start here with the XML accelerator. Then the name of the objects, of course, partial objects starts with a dollar sign equal, there's a commandlet called get content, it's grabbing the content of that file, and we know it is an XML, because it, finish, uh, it ends in .xml, but you know what, if it doesn't have an extension, and it is an XML file, it could consume and convert it, you know, it could read it, okay? But well, one of the most important thing is that you have to use the encoding, because everyone knows that an XML file is a UTF-8 encode. So, that's very important. So let me just quickly, uh, uh, jump into the demo here for the XML piece. It's going to be quick, so I'm not going to make that long. The fans are going to show you the XML, uh, Primal XML product from Sapiens Technology. And basically what this does is, uh, 
it can visually represent an XML file. And the reason I'm saying this is because sometimes you can open an XML file is all in a regular notepad or regular text editor, it might look like only a one line of text. This is one of the uh, things that an XML edit editor can do for you. It recognizes that it have XML tags and it will properly format in this order. In this case, we have different tags, product, product, and then the different other ones that would isolate the data, those elements, okay? And that's this is a basic uh, custom-made XML file, okay? Now, why it is important sometimes to understand XML? Well, when you want to read an XML file and reuse that file, there's something in a, in a .NET development world, if, if you use an XML file, you don't have to go and open the application to make modification to the XML file. You mean like opening uh, Visual Studio and then go open the XML file or the GUI within Visual Studio to affect uh, the value of that XML file. And this is a good example here. This is the text console passing argument. This is the actual XML uh, file of a .NET application that you have built some values within that XML, okay? And, and the reason for this is, of course, that you can use PowerShell just to go ahead and affect the XML file without recompiling the .NET application, okay? So it makes it efficient, okay? Now, I, I, I hope you're starting to understand what I'm leaning towards this uh, because this uh, relation is something that could happen in a scenario where you can, uh, you wanna run a program from within a package that is scheduled to run in an idly base and it needs a value to change. And you don't have to open the package, compile it and put it back, right? We just go straight to the XML and inject that value. And that's basically the whole uh, uh, basic concept of this presentation, okay? So we got the, uh, the XML editor, we got the files, examples of what, it, what we can do. But now, okay, this is just the file part. Now let's see how PowerShell will read and display this to us, right? So uh, let's open my PowerShell uh, studio here. And we're gonna load here. It's gonna show you, in II means it's an alias, okay, for invoke item and we have the path with the file name of an XML. This is just to open the editor. In this case, I already have the editor open, but just in case I didn't have the editor open, let me just go ahead and close my, my previous one here. And if I highlight, right click, and I'm gonna do run my selection in the console at the bottom. And there you go. My, the, the XML, uh, type is already associated with this application in my case. It could open Visual Studio or it could open what other, other editor the XML type is associated with. You know, it will open that particular application, okay? And then of course I go in here and it will display the file to me, right? Now, in the next example, what I'm gonna do is two one-liners. One reads the file, is an example on the presentation I show, it's a XML accelerator define the object type as an XML, and the get content will load the file in there. And then the second line, second line I go directly to a particular item. And let's see if this is gonna work, all right? Let's just try this here. XML, right, run selection, format list. Okay, now in this case, and then display anything, right? Well, that is a reason for that. And the reason for that is that my XML is wrong. You see this? Let me open here the XML. And in here I have products, products. So this is just to show that if, if you don't define correctly your tags, you know, it, it, it's not gonna work. So now if I go back, and fix that portion of this product products is through this and then I'm gonna run this again and there you go 
So it's very important to understand how you have structured your XML file, okay? In reality, what happened is that I label my tags wrong. Here I should have here I should have put product items to identify each item and then the values, you know, the fields and the content uh, of, of, of those, uh, those items, right? So, so now we fix that right there on the fly. Now, you notice here that I'm using, it's like a path. You see this, right? It goes products dot products, which in, in intent was product items. And that's how you navigate within your tags in, in PowerShell. In the next one here, I'm gonna, uh, let me fix this one in case here, uh, there you go. And we're gonna do the same thing, I'm, op I'm gonna open a grid view. At the same time, so you can see the, uh, the, uh, the members of that collection. And in here, uh, format table is a different way to display your data, right? One was a list, we show all the different fields and the values, and here shows the table format, just like a, you're doing a query into a database. So you can see PowerShell helps to mimic uh, a query. It is sort of like a query language at the same time because it's displaying your data out, out of a file that is stored in an object, okay? And then let me just find here, uh, let me just find here our missing review because this is one thing I discovered on I don't know if it's on Windows 8 it might happen I think it's on Windows 8.1 but the grid view doesn't show like it's highlighted until you grab it so now it will show here down at the bottom you see I have a PowerShell console session and grid view grid view didn't show up until I click and I drag so if that might be a slight bug on Windows 8.1 so here we're seeing the members of the objects. And you can see a lot of methods here where you can create and add elements. You know, you have to, you can add more tags and manipulate information there. That's why it's very important to understand that in order to uh, learn more about the object, the command to do that is get member and use it in combination with outgrid view. Okay. Now let's take a look at the. Um, at, at our uh, config, dot config, which is really an XML format file, but it is an um, .NET application XML file, okay? And we're gonna load that in there, and let's see, let's build this object. Uh, it does not exist, that means uh, I need to change my path to where the location is, or what's that mean? Quick fix on this one here. I don't have it there, but I know where it is. Let's look for it quickly. Then release. As you can see, I'm navigating through my .NET uh, .NET application folders. Used to you know, and there is the uh, .NET config file. Well, here it is. Copy, and I'll put it right here in the beginning of it. Let me try the try it again. It's loaded. And now what we're gonna do here, this have a method, okay? Uh, as as you haven't seen on the um, on the get member, you gotta pay close attention to close attention to the method that is offering you. Here we have a save method, meaning that uh, in the process of you trying to maybe change that XML file, a, a value within the XML file or adding, removing, you can do a save, save it under a different name, and then do the changes. And that's what we're going to do here quickly, right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save it as a backup of that config file. And I realized let me do an end here because when you do the semicolon, it means terminate line termination. And I click it here, hit save it. Now we have now we have a backup here. See? We created a copy of it before we make the modifications. 
Okay, so that's why you have to pay very close attention to whatever objects that you might build. It might have some methods that you can use in your advantage. Okay, uh, and of course we did this part already. That's a problem. Uh, XML method stays consistent. Uh, let me show you how the uh, the actual object that we build in PowerShell uh, looks like. And you can see when you try to see uh, it by typing the object name, it, it, you don't see anything. That's why you have to navigate that, do the dot, and you go through the different path. That's a path. There's an XML path. And I'll show you here how this thing goes. You see the configuration. You have all this other uh, XML to navigate to. Uh, in this case, I already know where I need to go, so I'm going to type in. Uh, the, the full pass I want to go to and this is just education you have to just do it understand your object okay the only way to do it is just typing and 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 doing if there's a mistake well if there's an error it's gonna let you know say but in this case okay I navigate to all this path in here to my setting path and I see all my variables name within for my application uh, the type of variable and their and their values Okay, and then after that, of course, I mean, I, I'm showing here that I'm going to do it in a table format, a little more compressed, more nicely, more nicely looking, eliminating all the all the spaces, you know, just to give you the flavor of all the how PowerShell works for you. And then there's another enumerator, it's another shortcut that you can use. Uh, this uh, method that you can just okay, this is my path I'm going to get to. And just let's use the get enumerator to display everything in there. Say it shows the same thing. So different ways, okay? Different way. You you pick the one you like, okay? Uh, now, this is this is a good one. Okay, this next piece of one-liner because I as as I mentioned before. The tick at the end of the line mean continuation, meaning that one line continues and the next line it is still considered. It looks like a two uh, two lines, but it's considered a one liner just because of the tick. Okay, so I do. I'm gonna go for that location. I'm gonna look for a particular value uh, uh, that is stored in there, and I'm gonna change the date. As you can see down here, we have the date of. Uh, 2011-09-29, right? So we're well, going to change it to today's date. This is how it's done. There's a value. Uh, there's a value for that object that you want to grab. Okay, I'm going to get to that particular spot. This is the name of 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 the field I'm going to look at. I'm going to change the value. Is what it means. So I'm going to run that. And as you can see at the bottom here, it's displaying the value that is going to be saved in there. Now, to verify, again, right, I'm going to use my previous one-liner to enumerate the content of, of my, uh, what is in memory, right? I changed this in memory. It's not saved on file. And as you can see here, boom, boom, it did the change, right? It did the change. Oh, I did it before there. Okay, good. So I'm going to, and then now I can go ahead and save it as a, as a new file name. See, I can use the save. I'm not changing my original one. I just keep just renaming it. And when I go back to the, to the file, I look for the safe one, new. There it is, my new config. And I'm going to open it. You know what? Let's do this, right? It's going to open it. And I think I have that code in here. Let's do this. I am going to the name of the file. So 
doesn't matter. There you go. Paste. And because this is not an XML, it's going to ask me, okay, how do you want to open this, right? So I'm going to go ahead and pick my application. There it is. I'm going to scroll down. And there's my file with the change that I did. Okay? So now you see how you can manipulate. Uh, with just a few lines of code, you can manipulate an XML file. How you're going to read it, navigate to the areas that you need to do. Um, optionally, you can add elements to it and uh, make it your own. Um, okay, so now let's continue with the purpose of, of our presentation here. .NET Application Console Test App. Now, I'm providing an example. I'm providing everything in, in this with, with this dem demo session. I'm giving you sample of BB.NET code, uh, C Sharp code. Uh, as you can see here, um, it is simple. It is simple code in it. It's a little wild because it's uh, I like dump a lot of stuff in there. But to give you an example, I create uh, arrays, work with integers and stuff. It's a very it's a very compact uh, application that I that I build here. Okay, it is it is available. Um, then. Uh, within that application, this is, this is how it's going to look like when you open a .NET, a Visual Studio, and build a .NET application that have some values, so integrated values. This is where that uh, app config come from. This is the GUI side of this is the GUI side of uh, Visual Studio, and this is exactly how it's going to look in your in your XML file when you open it. In this case, I'm opening the XML file here. In Visual Studio, also, uh, so that you have the feel and look of that. Now, integrating PowerShell in SSIS is very simple. It, everything goes through what is called a script task component, which we're going to show in, in the live in the live demo. And basically, uh, you have a process that might change the XML uh, before the XML change, and then you just go ahead and go through the process of the script task and then execute uh, the application with that XML that have changed. That's, that's, that's the very uh, essentials of it. This is how the script task component looks like. This is what they call the, um, uh, the Visual Studio coding within your SSIS uh, component here, task. Uh, it is very simple. As you can see in the example here, this is a C-sharp sample because you can create a script test uh, in, in a VB or C-sharp language. And the code represented here on the screen is how you can add the text, a partial text, within your C-sharp. Uh, it's just to show that you can concatenate strings, how to you know, make the changes and everything, give you an idea, okay? get simpler than this. But this is, in case you need to do something like this, it is possible, and this is an example of it. Now, using SQL Data Tools 2012, which is integrated into your Visual uh, Studio 2012, it's a separate component you need to install. Okay? But this is how it basically is going to look like. Uh, this sample is a no non, it's a nonsense, no nonsense sample. I mean, it's just this really doesn't do anything particular. It is just I draw it, um, added a couple components, and I I just tie them up together. Whereas the flow does is not important. Each of those individual components will represent something, which I'm going to explain in, in my next demo. Okay, the one with the dot means is you can set them up as a debug. You can debug within within your uh, script task, which is make it is a very powerful tool. Okay. Now, pitfall for this. Um, I don't know if you guys have used um, Visual Studio or built SSIS packages, but uh, uh, you're gonna find sometimes that you just open Visual, Visual Studio, build your your SSIS package, and you hit an error like this. Uh, 
it is catchy because most of the time you're thinking I have uh, admin rights on my machine and whatever I click is going to be you know as an administrator well it will let you work to a certain point but when you try to access a file directly from a directory on the network then boom thing is going to explode and this is a good example of what's going to happen so you're going to encounter uh, an exception and in this case this exception was only because you didn't open Visual Studio as an administrator it is a pain and let me tell you because I I've been on and off SSIS it took me almost two days to figure it out that it was just that and I mean it was like embarrassing but anyway this is an example of the exemption is going to look like this only means open me as an administrator okay there's one of the tips and tricks here now troubleshooting with breakpoints yes this is very nice okay when you start learning to use coding in, in Visual Studio you can do that within your SSIS script task and it works the same way and just put the red dot in the line that you want to stop the application from executing and then you can dive into all the different objects and the contents and uh, this is this is a very nice tool I mean even even if you um, it, do, it will not debug your PowerShell script but at least you'll find how it looks like in it okay uh, and uh, probably I'm gonna I'm gonna show you that uh, on on the demo too but it is a very useful tool now the whole intention of this thing is that if you have a uh, PowerShell script that's already built then you can use it in here I mean there's no changes all right there's no changes it's working here I'm gonna dump it in my SSI package I'm gonna consume it and I'm gonna get expect the same result so it, it, it's 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 add you know integrating technology in this case of course the source information of of, uh, of what I'm done here uh, tips and tricks and everything so um, it's a very good reading material in here okay and with this we're gonna show you the demo okay Let's go to let's go to first demo for the tools. All right. There's one tool that I've mentioned before. It's called Sharp Develop, and this tool it's very very useful. Okay, there's one feature. There's one feature in this tool that I haven't seen yet in Visual Studio, and this is why. Let's say you grab a, a code, a particular code. In this case, let's say this is .NET, uh, .NET VB.NET, and this code. Okay, wait a minute. I wanna. I don't wanna use VB.NET. I wanna do C Sharp. Well, this code, this application, what it does is take this code, and there's on the tool. There's an option convert to C Sharp. It will automatically convert that VB.NET code in C Sharp code. How sweet is that? So, if you have a code, uh, 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 you have in your organization say, "Oh, we only use VB.NET." Say, "Okay, no problem. Uh, I know this code in C# -sharp that I could use in my in my application. Doesn't matter. It's SIS or VB.NET uh, or, or, or or Visual Studio. Uh, with this little tool, can convert that." piece of code into the language you need to consume it so this, this is a good one okay this is a good one to have in your in your in your tool chest okay so now back into our visual studio here and I'm going to I'm going to go and execute this task here I have a series of tasks that I added this execute task go edit and you can see this is this is the uh, the task edit process tax editor which allow you to if you build an an exe or you want to include an exe within your within your SSIS package this is how you do it 
a path to it. There's some arguments you're passing to it. And, and then, of course, you know, it will execute that. Just to give you that, if you have an application to integrate into it, this is the component to use. I'm going to run this individually. That's the only purpose of the whole package is to run these different tasks one by one. There's no, res uh, there's no need for running all of them because this doesn't do anything. So in this case, I'm going to execute this. We'll execute the task. And I got the error. Why this error? Uh, oh, OK. Well, hold on a second. Let me rebuild this. Okay, protect has some protection level difference. Ah, uh, that happens when you do last minute changes to it. Okay, let me put this thing. Accept encrypt. Again, hopefully this will let me continue. Ha! You thought you can get me here. Ha ha! All right. <laughs> Quick thinking. All right. So we're back on track in here. So, so here we have. The the, uh, the code I was showing you before, which is the one here, this is the code that is running the executable. This is the result for it. Okay. Just just a way to okay, you know, I run my exe. I'm uh, providing I'm uh, providing I'm uh, providing this uh, arguments max max in the year and then of course just run the rest okay it's really a no nonsense uh, application they are gonna do asking me to press enter to continue so that way it will finish normally okay but now well, what we're interested on right we're interested in PowerShell so let's move to the next script here Script as now here I'm gonna open edit. You see it's different, right? I'm passing some values, but then to get to my code, and by the fact this is script language is C sharp, I gotta click here on the edit button. And let's wait until it comes out. Tell me, Visual Studio is busy. There you go. Perfect. All right, now here it is this is this is the script task editor. Uh, enhancing here a little bit here, and I'm gonna increase the font size. Control and roll mouse. Basically. Basically, this section is what you add. Uh, by default, when you open the script task editor, it comes with a predefined code, and then you just have to add the piece of code that you want to include in there. In this case, this is this is what I added. This is what it's taking is it's reading my variable that I define on my on my script task, and I'm gonna do a show box with a text and a title to it. So let's run this. I'm going to close here. Right click. And we're going to do execute task. And here's the pop up box that I asked for. 
when we're getting closer, we're getting closer with, with, with using PowerShell here, okay? Don't, don't, don't get too excited. I hear you guys snoring in there, okay? All right, so there you go. I'm going to click here. I'm going to go back to my components. And now what we're going to do, we're going to do, let's do one with some PowerShell in it, right? Everybody's cheering. I see the cheer. I hear the cheering. Yay! All right, PowerShell, finally. All right, here we go. Let's give you a few uh, minutes here. Hopefully one. Why? While, while uh, oh, by the way, I'm using Windows 8.1 Preview and it's working beautifully. So, I haven't seen a blue screen of death and I jinxed myself, right? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Some PowerShell magic coming. There's some PowerShell magic coming. Let me uh, increase this here, let me resize, roll up, you know, I'm going to do the control to zoom, control mouse, oops, one zoom, there you go. This is one example of the slide that I was showing, right? Again, this is the section that you have to populate uh, when you open the script task. And in this example, I'm creating a run space. Uh, and opening the run space, then I'm piping the string. This is how, if you need to concatenate, uh, uh, just break down a script into a script task, kind of is the long way, right? But if you need to, this is how it's done. Do you see the plus here, sign to concatenate, uh, olden double quote, uh, and then here using a .NET function to get the date, format it, in YYMMDD format. And then, of course, remember the save method? I got a save method here included. You know, like it's, it's adding, it's adding uh, another line of commands. This is how you do that, okay? And as so you can see in here that I added, it's only one string, right? It's a whole one string, but because I'm adding my first one liner ends in a semicolon. And then the next line doesn't need to have any. I, I could I could easily just do this too. Just add a semicolon in there. It means this end the first line, this end the second line. It doesn't matter. Okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and run this baby. Just to ensure that it's running. It ran, no errors, right? Okay, so now if I go here, let me see. Uh, I should have another file in here. I'm not mistaken. It's somewhere there. Do, do, do. Oh, wait, wait, wait. My, there you go. There you go. There it is. Okay, because I already have a path where I'm going to put my, my new file that I saved. So it's working. Okay, it did work. Perfect. So now. Oh, but well, wait a minute. Oh, but that was too long, right? It was too long, too many things to do in a little simple. Well, it makes it more simple. You have a script that is working. I need to integrate this into a script task component. This is how you do it. Okay? I'm going to go back, get out of my uh, execution flow here, and then I'm going to do right click, execute task. Ah, and I got an error. Yay! Got an error. Okay, that's interesting. Well, we'll go back. What I wanted to do is this one here. Script task. Let's do the edit first to show you what is supposed to happen. You gotta love it. No, 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 no presentation has to be that perfect. All right, so let's wait until this thing comes up. Because basically, the main intent is to show you how you can consume your 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 already working script without any alteration. So, and that's what we want to do here. Okay, open this thing wide. Go back. Wow, what a 
that difference, right? That's how you consume your, your PowerShell script. It's an SSIS task. How many lines? Really? .NET? Okay, okay. Maybe just, 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 okay. But it's, it's still, it is. This is what makes the magic. You could do this other one too. You can do the string, you know, identify, use the string, load the path with the, and then, then you can consume with the uh, commands add script. But in this case, just use the add with the pipe, pipe commands add, and consume uh, the, uh, the, the publisher script right there. Okay? This is the way to do it. This is the way to do it. So now, for curiosity, because I'm logging in as administrator and it bombed on me, so this is a new condition that happened here. Let's see if we can troubleshoot it quickly here. Okay. Let me make sure I do the rebuild. And let's try why. Why this is. That's why this thing bombed me. Let's see. Let's see if it bumps out again. Okay. Daddy, what's for dinner? Ooh, interesting. So. Let's open here. Edit. comes up. This is good. We have enough time to make sure this puppy here is working. Matter of fact, this is the first dry run. I when I last time I did this, I did it in twenty in twenty ten. So most part is work it has been working okay. Let me make sure the path is correct. Ah, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Really? Is that what it is? Okay, some changes here, and we're going to do the build. The build. Save. Uh, then I want to exit. Okay. Quick troubleshooting, see if it helps. I see I go two for two today, tonight. Oh, and no, it's been stubborn with me. Okay, let's see here. Let's see what I got here. Let's see what I got here. Let's see. Where are you? Where are you? There you are. This is the one I'm trying to open, make sure I don't have it on the secure. It is a security issue. It, that, that's why that, that error comes out. Let's see something in here. Uh, Oh, this one ran. Um, let's see if I can do this one. Let's go for this one. This one, uh, let's move along with this one. See if it's maybe that particular task. It might be the whole thing, but this other one is what identify the debug option. take a few minutes to pop up the uh, script editor piece. There we go. Okay, here we go with this. 
And basically what I'm trapping is uh, this line. I'm using this system IO file read all text file, which means it's going to build me a, uh, a string with all my script information and dump it in it. And the purpose here was that when it runs, hopefully it will run, that it runs, it will stop in here and then you can see all the different objects. If not, we can tie it up to the other one just to give you a feel of, of how it looks like. Uh, so let me just go ahead and close this, close this. If it breaks here, then it means that this is um, my, my DTS package is see security is bomb out. It might let us get to the point of the debug because I'm not actually running the script. It's when I run the script that it, it, it bombs out. Let's see if it let us do the debug part before it bombs out. Just to show you the functionality of it. It's thinking, it's thinking. It's thinking, should I bomb out or should I give him a break or? I'm not sure I'll have it open somewhere here, okay. There we go. This, this piece of the demo will work because this is just to show uh, how can we read the variable that we uh, were using for to store the PowerShell script. There you go. Okay. Now let's move this up a little bit. Enhance this bigger. And here it is. Now here is to be a little bit. Looking at the this might change a little bit because I remember a little bit different in 2010. So we're gonna go and explore here. Where is my Here, aha, okay, and expand, expand, output pipeline. I'm trying to look for that. Oh, wait, 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 wait. wait, wait where is the stack? Stack, 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 locals, local, 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 PS pipe. Let's see. You have to look for the exact location. Let's see, pi. Man, you. P.S. Ah, oh man. It, okay. Now, you know where I'm at here. I'm in the string, this line. It's ready to execute. What's going to happen? <laughs> I think if I, ex let me put another tag in here. If I execute this, it might load that, it might bomb out just because it's trying to read my, my directory there, right? But if we pass that point on the locals, look for the variable name that you just defined. You see here the value is null right now because it's not populated. But if we were successful to populate, here's where you find the code. Okay? Here's where you find the code. So let's just be gun ho here and let's let's uh, we know what's gonna happen. It's gonna it's gonna bomb out. I'm gonna click here continue and it's gonna give me the error. Oh, it didn't. Alright, okay, cool, it didn't. Perfect. So let me open here, pull this up here. 
right here. And here, see that little magnifying glass? It gives you the code you read in to your variable in, uh, in this debugger. How cool is that? How cool is that? Is it, you know, the bottom line is that everything is about understanding the tools, you know, and even, and even, I don't use it that often, but, you know, it just understanding it, you know, this is where I can find the stuff. Is a good example. So the text visualizer pops up, and then you can see, you know, oh, this is it's reading it. At least I can confirm that this code is reading the script. Okay. And now for the final bomb, let's just continue. This is when you're gonna do the invoke. It's gonna bomb out. I'm going to have to debug that for the next session. Oh, it finished. Woohoo! All right. Yay! So I have something wrong on this, which is perfect. It's great because, I mean, yeah, one bomb out and the other one results. So awesome. So in, in, in a way, in this one, I don't know if you notice, there's two ways you can read the file. One is straight using straight.net. Uh, let me open this one again. So you can so you can see the uh, the difference. That takes a few minutes. Come on, come on. It's coming soon. It's coming soon. It's it's, it's, it's there. It's right there. It's gonna show us the code again. Well, this is taking too long now. Oh, there you go. Thank you. You know, this is a straight.net way to read the whole file using system IO file that read all text. Which in the other one was just the uh, the command using using the uh, system automation command. One thing that I failed to mention before, that in order for this to consume to consume the uh, PowerShell, this needs to be added. System Management Automation Run Space. This has to be added. That line has to be added on the namespace. And at the same time, you need to look here on the right-hand side, References. And that has to be added in there too. Here it is. So you add that first, add reference first to the system management automation, and then you have to include the using so that way it knows when you copy paste the code, because I'm gonna give you the code, right? You copy copy paste this code, then you'll see it's gonna everything's gonna properly fill in. Okay? And gentlemen, this ends the presentation. Any 